Okay, let's do another Bernoulli equation example. Um, this is more of an application problem. Here we have um, two dam looking things, but water is flowing over them. Uh, in scenario A, we have the water height is 10 feet up here, and it's traveling at 5 feet per second, and goes down, and it creates a small, smaller depth here, and it's only 2 feet high here. So it goes from 10 feet to 2 feet uh, after this little stopper thing. And in scenario B, uh, the velocity is the same. It's still 5 feet per second, but the depth or the height of the water here is 15 feet instead of 10 feet. And the smaller portion is 3 feet. And basically the question is asking uh, which one is more realistic. And we can use what we've learned in fluid mechanics to figure out uh, which of these two scenarios is possible and which of them um, aren't. So, I guess we can try out uh, flow rate. We can, we can use flow rate uh, to figure out maybe what, what the velocity at these smaller ends are. So we can, let's label this point 1, and this point 2, and then same thing here, point 1, and then point 2. And you know from uh, previous examples that the flow rate, the volumetric flow rate, is equal to the velocity times the area, right? And same thing for Q is equal to V A. The flow rate is equal to the velocity times area. And the area is equal to the width times the height. Oops. Right? And the width of both these channels are 50 feet. So it's, it's 50 feet into the, into the camera or out of the paper. Right? And you know from continuity that the flow rate at 1 should equal the flow rate at 2. So Q1 should equal Q2. Or V1, A1 should be equal to V2, A2. Right? And the velocity at 1 appears 5, and the area is, well, it would be 10, right, 10 feet high, and then 50 feet wide, so 50 feet up, or sideways, I mean, we're looking at it from the side. Um, we can just call width is 50 feet up here for both A and B. Uh, let's just call it... W for width for now. So it'll be 10 times W, right? 10 W is equal to V2. Well, that's what we're trying to find. We don't know it. And the A2 is, well, it's 2 times W, right? 2 times W. That's the area. And you see here right away that the W's cancel out, and you get V2 is equal to uh, 25 feet per second. All right, and this is for scenario A. So for scenario B, we, we also have Q1 is equal to Q2. That means V1A1 is equal to V2A2, right? And the velocity at 1 is 5. The area at 1 is 15 times W, right? 15 feet high. In, in this case, it was 10. Uh, 15W is equal to V2, which is... Uh, uh, what we're trying to find, and the area at 2 is 3 times W, because here it's only 3 feet high, right? Compared to here, it was 2 feet. And if we, if we solve for V2 here, we actually get V2 is equal to 25 feet per second. Hmm. So, it doesn't, for both these scenarios, we found out that V2 for A and B are equal to 25 feet per second. Well, that's not much help. Because our continuity equation says that the that each of the exit velocities are exactly the same. They're both 25 feet per second. Well, not much help. It doesn't tell us which one's more realistic. So why don't we look at energy head? We'll try energy head. And remember, our energy head, our total... Let me draw a line. Our total energy head 
is equal to the velocity squared over 2 times gravity plus the pressure over the specific uh, weight of the fluid we're studying, or gamma, plus the height relative to an established datum. And the datum we'll just, we'll just put here for both of them, right? Y positive. This is zero elevation, okay? So if we did that, for scenario A, we can find the total head at energy at, at um, point 1 and compare it to point 2. The same thing for B. We can find the total energy head at 1 and compare it to point 2. So let's, let's work on the A side first. We'll say the total energy head at point 1 for the A side is going to be equal to all of this, right? The velocity at 1 would be 5 feet per second. So 5 squared over 2 times gravity plus pressure over gamma. Well, isn't the, this is open to the atmosphere, so the pressure at 1 is equal to 0. So that would make this term 0, right? So 0. Plus the height relative to the datum. So this is 0, and it's 10 feet high. So the height of point 1 is 10. And if we do this, if we, we, we solve this out, we get the total energy head at 1 is about 10.39 uh, feet. Okay. And let's do that same method for point, oops, point 2 down here for A. Our velocity at 2 we found out to be 25 feet per second, so it's 25 squared over 2 times g plus the pressure at 2. Well, the pressure at 2 is also equal to the atmosphere, right? So that's that's just 0. That whole term is 0 plus the height. Well, in this case, point 0.2 is only 2 feet high, right? 2 feet high. So we'll do that, 2 feet. And we solve and we get the total energy head at point 0.2 for scenario A is about 11.7 feet. Okay, okay. Now let's do the same analysis for scenario B, okay? So our total energy head at point 1 for B, for point 1, is going to be equal to uh, V squared, which is 5 feet per second squared. So 5 squared over 2G plus pressure over gamma. Again, that's 0 because... Point 1 is open to the atmosphere, uh, plus the height. The height relative to the base here is, looks like 15 feet, right? So 15. So we solve that and we get the total energy head at point 1 of scenario B um, is about 15.39 feet. Okay, that's the total energy head at point 1. And the same thing for point 2. Well, in this case, velocity at 2 was, again, 25 feet. So we'll do 25 squared over 2g plus pressure over gamma, which is, again, 0, plus the height, which is about 3 feet, right? And we solve that, and we get, what do we get? We get about 12.7 feet. Okay, now let's let's look at this. In in scenario A, we had a smaller height than scenario B, and the exit height was also smaller than point B. But when we looked at the total energy head, we saw that the energy at one was ten point three nine feet. The energy head at one was ten point three nine feet. And the energy head at point 2 was 11.7 feet. So in this scenario, the energy head from point 1 to point 2 actually increased. Which is kind of weird because you would think this, this stopper dam thing would take away energy from the flow. There, there, I mean, there was nothing here to give that water more energy, right? There was no pump pushing, pushing the water and giving it more energy. There was a stopper. It was resisting against the water. Okay. But for B, we got that the energy head at 1 
was 15.39 feet up here and at 2 we got 12.7 feet it decreased which actually makes a little bit more sense right because if water is flowing 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 and then it hits this obstacle it doesn't gain energy it loses energy right it gets slower or or well the velocity doesn't get slower but the energy head decreases and in scenario a somehow this stopper gave the water more energy head which is actually not possible right you can't gain energy when you hit something uh, think about if you're if you're just going um, if you're moving along in a car and you hit this bumpy road well if you let off your acceleration pedal you're not gonna gain any more energy that bumpy road isn't gonna give you energy it's gonna slow you down so in scenario A we actually gain energy head and in scenario B we lose energy head so to answer the question scenario B would be more would be um, possible because energy heads can decrease but energy heads um, uh, cannot increase which which was stated in in scenario A so scenario A told us that oh look the energy head increased and that's that's not possible and there's some there's many reasons why that's not possible um, there could be obstacles there could be friction and there, there's a whole bunch of other reasons but by the end of the day we know that energy head can't increase or at least not in this problem